Hi everyone, so in this video we're taking a look at how to join and exit slip roads safely. I'll be joining several fast roads or the same fast roads several times at high speed and I'll be showing you several methods of how you can judge whether or not you've got enough room to get out because that's what many people struggle with. They say, how do I know if I've got room to get out in front of people? Am I going to cause a crash? Also, what happens if you can't go? What if it's just too busy? And no matter what you do, no matter what method or technique you use, nothing works and you just can't go. Well, I'll be showing you several sample video clips that I've collected from my driving lessons, showing you how to handle that. And in particular today, we'll be taking a look at my rear camera and I'll be showing you what's going on behind me as we're joining these roads. So I'm going to wear my sunglasses because it's a nice, bright, sunny, hot day. But let's get the car turned on. Let's get going. I'm going to start off by joining a slip road at the end of this road. So the idea of slip roads is you should build your speed up to match the speed of the traffic. Not necessarily the speed of the road, but the speed of the traffic. So I'm in third gear now. This car can handle this bend in third. I'm looking ahead. I can see there's a slip road. So I'll come around the bend and I start accelerating, shut my mirrors, signal. I've finally checked in my blind spot. There's no one around, so off I go. That van's going to pull over, so I'll move straight to the right hand lane and then move back to the left lane as I normally would. Now that was quite a good example because that's what can happen when you join the road. I'm going to do a U turn here, so I'm actually going to go in the right lane and turn around. That was a great example of how you can be joining a road, accelerating, and there's a vehicle in front of you that's slowing down. And I hope you can hear this okay, because they've just resurfaced this road, and the surfacing is absolutely terrible. It's far worse than it was before. So we go down that road the other way, and this is the A435 South. I will be doing videos in the future on how I'm, how I'm doing this roundabout, but this is exactly how it should be done, although it might seem a bit of a strange path that I'm taking, that's how it should be done. So I'm going to come off here and I'm going to make good progress and overtake this lorry. So I'll stay in third, check the mirrors, boost around the truck, because it is 70 on this road, so I'm going to build at fifth, build up to sixth. Is it worth me coming back before this van? Well, this grey car ahead is slowing me down, because we're only doing 60, so I don't need to move out of the way, and they are moving out of the way. Are they? Yep. So I'm going to get right up to 70. I'm not pushing them out of the way, I'm not being aggressive, it's just they're doing well less than the speed limit. I'm now going to move back over to the left because I know this van's going slowly, I know that in a moment the speed limit comes down, so I don't need to rotate them. I'll actually come off on this one, on this slip road, I'll check my mirrors, signal, over I go. The beeping is when you're speeding, but you're not because the car's just got the speed wrong. It's saying it's 30, but it's not 30 down here. So I'm now going to go back up the other side and rejoin that road. This is not so much a slip road as such, because it actually comes up like this. And I'm going to be going A435S. So I'm coming up the hill. I should check the mirrors when I get there. It's down to 50 now, but I'm doing 42. So I'll signal to the right. I'm checking my mirrors and my blind spot, which I can check by doing that. And there's another handy way you can do it, which is by leaning like that and looking in the mirror. And that opens up the blind spot. Not good enough for when you move off. You must still check your blind spot when you move off. But for change of lanes on these roads, it's a good idea to lean like that. And you'll see the blind spot is partially opened up in the mirrors. So I'll come into first gear. I'm going to roll just for a little bit, but the lights are still on red. Now they're going green in a few seconds. So I'll keep rolling, creeping, and I shall go soon. And there'll be lots more slip roads in a moment. So A435S. So I'll stay in the centre lane. I was holding my position. I'm going to not be in the blind spot of that car on the left of me, so I'll get out of their way. They're going down the motorway anyway. So I'm checking around, signalling left. I'm covering the clutch just in case I need to stop, but I don't, so I'll select fourth and off I go. And there'll be lots more slip roads coming up. I've got cars on the right, maybe, cars on the left, maybe. So I'm checking around, checking my left blind spot as well. There's a van there, so I'll indicate left. I should move left before that van gets there. I now start back a little bit from this car ahead. The van can overtake if they want, but I'll be going off on the next left. I'm going to be going off and on as many times as I can to show you as many slip roads as possible. 
be aware as well that things are slightly distorted in the cameras so the speed and the distance that you're seeing is not quite the same as it actually is because the cameras have a fisheye lens so it looks very slightly differently on camera to how it does in real life so I'm exiting the road there I checked the mirrors and seen the left and I came off onto this slip road I'm now going to go ahead and rejoin that road and I'll talk to you more about how you can judge whether or not it's safe to join so I'm checking my mirrors there's nothing going on behind me for a long long way I'm braking a bit leaving the clutch up as long as I can to avoid coasting clutch down into first gear I'm going to go slow on this one because it's quite a bad view and off I go as I enter here you notice I need to give way to the right there are no markings but I give way to the right there's no one there so off I go so on a slip road get your foot down accelerate match the speed of the traffic on the road which is currently 70 so I'm picking up now I'm at 60 mirrors signal quick blind spot check or lean in the mirror they're way back so I join the road I won't go too fast because the blue BMW is going to overtake it's really annoying if you've joined a road like that or if you're that car the blue one somebody joins the road and they put their foot right down and outrun you because that car's not going too fast see how the red ones haven't slowed down so if ever you join a road like that do not accelerate flat out and block the people in the right lane that is something you will fail the driving test for and I'll talk more about that in a moment I'm now going to take the next left towards the public way bridge so I'll check my mirrors I see the sign coming up here for the public way bridge and the skid marks on the floor where someone brakes really hard so I'll signal left now in plenty of time the idea with the slip road when you exit is to come off onto the slip road like this then apply the brake now hard braking with the clutch up signal comes off down to third gear for this one pedals off round the bend sometimes I leave the signal on but in that case it was obvious what I was doing I'm now going to pull up on the right after this truck notice this road is two way there was a clip in one of my hazard perception videos where someone didn't notice that and they were driving down here on the wrong side of the road so I know that's quite fast and frantic and I know with my sunglasses on you can't always see exactly where I'm looking but it's a really bright day so I'm gonna I'll drive without these on for a bit so you can see my eyes better but it is a little bit bright so how to judge whether or not it's safe to pull out in front of someone the thing is it's not so much where they are it's how fast they're going imagine I've got a car behind me now where that lorry is with the engine running imagine that lorry is on the main road and I'm coming up the slip road to join the main road the distance that they are at now will be fine if they are going the same speed as I am or less this is where people often go wrong a lot of people say well I can't join because there's a truck there there's a truck there and the lorry is flushing saying go 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 and I'm saying go 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 and the pupil doesn't go and this is what happens in that situation So as you can see, even though I was saying go, 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 the people didn't go. Now why do people do that? Well you might know I'm not just a driving instructor, I'm also a professional therapist. So without getting too much off topic, very simply, the reason people do that is because there are two sides to your brain, the emotional side and the logical side. Whenever there is a conflict between the emotional side and the logical side, the emotional side will always win you've heard about people's emotions getting the better of them and you know what it's like when you see an advert for like a car or a new burger or a fast food joint it's like oh I want that I want that because it looks good and it's going to taste great that burger not the car <laughs> emotion takes over and advertisers play on emotions a lot that's why you can be saying to people go 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 and their logical minds logical, logical brain is thinking yeah I'm going to go my instructor's saying go but they won't go 
because the instinct, the survival instinct kicks in, the emotions kick in, and it doesn't matter what the instructor's saying, that people is gonna stop. So those things can happen. But going back to what I was saying, it's not so much how far back they are, but how fast they're going. Imagine if a car was way, way back down the road, but they're doing 100 miles an hour. I'm not gonna pull out in front of that car because they're gonna catch me so fast that it could hit me. It sounds obvious, but if the object on the road, if the vehicle on the road is getting closer and getting bigger in the mirror, don't go. If it's staying the same distance back or getting smaller, it's safe to go. Let's get going and I'll show you some more examples of that. I'll signal because the view is quite bad from ahead and it is a two-way road, as I mentioned. So which way does the road go now? Look at the floor. It's very hard to see, but there is a white line across that road. So we'll go around this way. Now I'm going to do this as a right then a left. You could do it as an ahead, it doesn't matter how you do it. But I'm going to call this a right then a left. So, creeping up here, the view is quite poor. And I'll go, so I'll go left on this road now. So it's another slip road. There are no signs around here saying slip road. There are slip road signs, you can go and look those up if you like. But you don't get them around here, so I didn't show those because you won't help at all around this area. So another slip road, I'm doing 37. Come around the bend, checking my mirrors, no one behind me. Signal right now, got a big lorry there, checking around, no one there, so I join. So at the moment it's quite clear, but I'll be showing you some clips of when it's not so clear and when it's quite busy. So I'm going to carry on down the road. I'm not going to overtake the truck just because I'm going to a place called Allen Hall, which as you see there is half a mile away. So if I'm doing 60 miles an hour, as I am just about now, how long does it take to travel half a mile at 60 miles an hour? Half a minute, because there are 60 minutes in an hour, 60 miles an hour means you do about a mile a minute. So half a mile, half a minute. Good way that of telling whether it's worth overtaking the truck. It's only half a minute away, so I'm not going to bother. So I'll check my mirrors, sitting or left about now. There are no other side roads. I can see that on the screen and I know because I've been here a few thousand times before. As I come off the road, I keep the speed high, check what's going on behind me. That car is staying on the main road, so I can apply the brake. Back to two-way traffic, and I should choose third. Looking ahead, I've got give way sign. So again, my mirrors and my signal. And I'm going to go right, I'm going to go back down that road the other way now. So I do brake, clutch, steer, then gear, roll, can I go? Looks good. Yes, off I go. Now this slip road is quite unusual because I think you'll see this on the video, I hope you can. It's a car behind me so I'll speed up. I'm looking to the right as I go over the bridge and the road's fairly clear. There's a black car coming towards me. That's so I can prove I look to the right. There'll be a black car comes up now. There he is. Now here you see there's a slip road and the sign is warning us there's a bit here where that can actually come through. So this bit between the grass, our car could have come off and be rejoining. There's no one there. So I build up to match the speed of the traffic on the road. I'll do fourth this time. It's fairly quiet today, but I'll signal anyway. I'll leave as late as I can to join, let the grass push me out. Now that's the grass verge pushes me over. Then I go fourth to sixth. So at the moment it's been fairly quiet, and that's what it's normally like most times. But I'm going to put those clips in showing you when it's not as quiet as this. I'm going to carry on for some time going to a place called, uh, what's the next place I'm going to? to back towards the public way bridge. I'm doing 65, which is a decent speed. I don't need to go any faster for now. The sign is showing me that the road on the left is coming up. So I should sit on the left now, give the car beyond lots of warning. It's a short slip road. It's always good to think, is it short or long? It's a short slip road, this one. So I'm going to make sure I get off onto the slip road and apply lots of brake now. A lot of people don't brake hard enough here. Let's learn a driver that is. So I brake, 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 brake. Third, round of any third. Again, I could choose to leave my indicator on. There's nothing wrong, and I often do say leave it on. It's up to you to decide what's going on around you at that time. There's no one ahead on this roundabout at the moment, so I can say third, it's all nice open roads. And I'll go around in third. Let's hope this time that when I join the road, it's a bit busier and there's more traffic for me to talk about. So I'm coming around the bend. If I didn't know where I was, I'd be thinking was a person in the road. I can't really tell what's going on because there aren't many signs saying about the bend, but as you can see, 
there is a bend, that's the road opposite that we pulled up on earlier. So around the bend, look to the right, it's not too busy. It's a long slip road, so I accelerate away. It's truck is way back to a signal. And check my blind spot finally, and off I go. So this is all very easy at the moment. There's not been a time when I couldn't really join. I'm going to go around this car because they're going a bit slow. I'd always have that quick check of your blind spot. That can be a lifesaver. You don't want to turn your head backwards when you're travelling at a speed for too long. But if you don't check that blind spot, it could be a killer. There I could see the car passed in my mirrors, so I didn't have to. Poor way. So next left, mirrors, signal. The diagonal line means slip road, deceleration lane. So I'll come off when I'm off the road. Now I start braking and I'm slowing down. It's still 60 down here, but it's still national down here, it's 60. That car, I'm gonna brake in case, but they did see me. There is a sign on the left here saying speed camera 30. That's from some roadworks they did a few years ago. I'm gonna pull up on the left here. Those of you that watch my videos regularly might recognize this area is where um, <laughs> I thought my car broke down once it turned out I just had a, um, a stone in the tire that breaks and someone jogging it behind me. You can even get joggers, you see when you're doing things like this. So yeah, I once had my car broke down, if you want to call it that here, when a mechanic had to come and get a stone at the tire. That would have been about three years ago now. So to go over a few things that I can't always explain so well on the move, you check your blind spot like that because there could be someone there, especially on the motorway. If you're coming into lane one, there could be someone in lane three. And if they're coming over or you're coming over, you can get the pincer, you can meet in the middle. You don't want to go like that and have your head turned for ages and looking like that, otherwise it's too late. You could have run someone over or gone into the back of that van that was there on the first slip road we did. So you can look in the mirror and lean like that. That's fine, but you must check your blind spot. I see a lot of new drivers just sort of doing this and there's the bike there and I can't hear them, can't see them and I'm waiting to go for the wheel and the people goes to move and I say, no, what's in the blind spot? Oh yeah, there's a biker. So let's get going. You know, I won't sit on now because no one's going to benefit from that. So straight on, I can see the jogger, he's still jogging on the left. So when I join the road again, hopefully we'll get one where there's a bit more traffic. But like I said, that's why I've been putting these video clips in. I've saved up lots of video clips of when he was good and when he was bad to join. So I'm breaking a bit in case I can't get around the car, I've dropped a third. I've got no choice but to cross this solid white line because I've got to go around the vehicle. Check the mirrors, back in, off I go. Now this road planning ahead, is this road one way or two way? What do you think? This now, is this one way or two way? It's actually two way national, which can seem pretty dangerous. But the thing is, you can only come up here, turn around and come back. So you would probably know it's like this if you've come up here, because you'd have seen it. You can't come in from the end of the road because you'd have to do a handbrake turn off the dual carriageway to get in here. See how here? It's like where the road ends effectively. If you're coming in the other way, you can't come in that way. So I build up speed on the slip road. There is absolutely no one around at all. And I'll still signal. The reason I do that is let's just imagine that you've missed someone. Imagine that you've looked and you've looked everywhere, the blind spot included, but you haven't seen anyone. If you signal, I've had this twice in my life when I've signalled and I've heard a horn go off. And I thought, where did they come from? You've got no idea where they come from. You've checked everywhere, they're not even there. And that signal has saved my life twice. So I always signal when I'm joining uh, fast road. I won't creep here because I've just gone red. I'll go to neutral. The engine will shut down for a moment. I can see the green light the other way. So when I go to amber, I shall select first gear again to turn the car back on. So it is unfortunately a bit of a quiet day. It's going to amber. There's a bike behind me, the bike I was talking about. That's good, good example. Wait for the green, check even though it's light controlled. I've seen people go through red lights here. Keeping my eye on the biker. I'm going the next exit, so I'm keeping my eye on that biker behind. There are more lights here, so I'm braking a little bit. I'll see not left to tell the biker where I'm going. I do clutch down into first, so I shall roll for a little bit. But they're still on green the other way, so I'll stop dead and brake in neutral. If you're new to driving, you might not feel comfortable with your engine shutting down like this. Because I'm experienced, I can get it going again quite quickly. I'm going to clutch one, ready to go. 
normally what we recommend is if you're in the first three vehicles so that lorry ahead's going the wrong way you shouldn't be going right from that way that's why I see no left to confirm yes I'm definitely coming off so I'll come off expecting the bike to overtake and I'm going to go second left anyway so I won't speed it much just a little bit so the bike can go around if you want but he's not going around so I'll speed up a little bit more I'll check my mirrors again see no left runs past this road get onto the deceleration lane the slip road whatever you want to call it and then you slow down. I don't need too much now because I'm already going quite slowly. I should join the road again. I should go ahead on this one. And while I'm here, I'll go and show you something which is quite strange, just to, uh, to show you how these things can happen. So I'm gonna go around here, go into first. I'm sorry there's not more traffic. Well, I'm not, I'm glad there's not more traffic, but it would be nice for the sake of this video if there's a bit more traffic around, but like I say, that's why I've been putting the video clips in. I've been showing you some examples of when it's not so easy. So I'm going to go next left. Here's a good tip for you, especially if you're driving in England. If ever a road has a funny name, like this one is Dumble Pit Lane. Funny names mean funny roads. As you can see, it's a really tight road. Look how narrow this is. Any of you that watch my videos in America might not believe we have roads this narrow. What's the speed limit on this road? Do you know what it is? National. Yeah, it's 60 down here. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing one of 15 on this part. I'm going really slow, I'm listening for any cars the other way. Yeah, national down here, that is not conducive. So, have a look what's coming up at the end of the road. Again, funny names, funny roads. Looking ahead, you see we've got a roundabout sign. However, that is on the other side of the road. What else have you got? Apart from the car saying it's 10 miles now, it's not 10 miles now, it's beeping at me. No entry, so where do I go? Where do I go? There's a pair of no entries, the one is hidden in the trees. So I'll go this way, and I'm now giving way to the slip road in the main road. So here, I'm going to go left. I'm not sibling because no one will benefit from that. These cars wouldn't see it. I'm going to go onto this road like this, now I signal left to show these cars behind. I'm not going to join the main road, and that Porsche can go around that's good so good example there of what can happen if you get a funny funny name of the road it's often a funny road there are quite a few funny named roads around here I might do a video on that there's a, a really good one just the other way which I'll do one about one day so I'm gonna go ahead on this junction and what I'm gonna do again is pick up speed this one looks a little bit busier so that's good Hopefully there might be some people there in my uh, in my rear, I was going to say. <laughs> there might be some people in the rear camera. So I'm picking up to match the speed that the red lorry's doing. I'll get to fifth because this car's quite strong. It's got the power to, to get up in fifth. I'll signal now. Let the grass push you out. There's no point in joining here. Wait till the line becomes single. There's no one around at all, but I'll wait and wait. They're quite far back to this. So I'll wait and wait and wait and wait. Then I join. Take all the time you can. I'm going to leave again immediately. So I'll come off onto the slip road. I break now quite firmly. I'll leave the signal on this time because it's busier. I should come down to second gear. Pedals off, gear selected now before the bend. If you want to know how to do that smoothly, watch the video I've done on how to change gear smoothly. So there you go. That's how you do slip roads. It's simply a case of get the speed up and match the speed that the traffic on the road is doing. Don't just blindly build up to the speed of the road because it may be that the road you're joining has a limit of 70 but there's a traffic jam on it so you don't want to be doing 70 right up to a traffic jam and again you've obviously seen sample clips of those things because I've come out today to film this with a bit of a nice sunny day but we didn't have too many occasions when there were you know there was a whole lot going on so you build up speed on the slip road you then start looking in the mirrors and check the blind spot without turning your head round for too long if the vehicle is quite far back, assess its speed. If it's flying towards you, don't go. Now, the big thing I want to finish this video is with is about what happens if you can't go. What do you do? Do you know what to do if you can't go on a slip road? And this includes on a motorway. I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. What do you do if you really, really can't join on a slip road? I shall pull up just after 
I'll go down this road, I'll put it just place police car actually. I'll just back in a little bit because the road's a little bit wider behind. That'll do that. So what do you do if you're going on a slip road but you just can't join it? And you've done everything you can, all the tricks in the book, you can't join. You stop. Now this is something that people argue about, but he does say in the rule books, that's what you do. You'll probably not stop dead, you probably continue to creep a little bit and have some momentum. But you'll be seeing clips of that in a moment. I'm going to show you some now of two great examples where the same pupil were saying about how rare it is where you have to slow right down and almost stop. And it happened twice within the space of an hour. So here are some sample video clips showing you that now. That's really good as well because that car wasn't going to move. That's great. That's rare you get to see that. There's some new stones. Right, that was good. It's good to see those as well. Because if you don't see those, you'd say you're not going to. So there you go, you can stop on a slip road if it's absolutely necessary. Remember that the people on the main road have right of way. You are joining their road. Now, there are times when you join from the right, you might be here and you're joining the road the other way. There is um, a clip of that on one of my Lucy's Lessons videos. If you don't know what that is, five years ago now, I taught someone to drive on camera from start to finish. And there is a clip I'll link to in the description showing you us joining a road from the right to the left. So that's what you do. You simply build up your speed. If you really, really can't join, you can slow down or stop, but that shouldn't be happening too often. If you find that you're stopping on slip roads too often, it means you probably approach them uh, in the wrong way. So if you're coming up and coming up and coming up and you're having to keep stopping dead, that means that you're probably not planning as well as you could and you're getting caught out because, so I'm just checking what these people are doing. <laughs> You should be building up your speed and joining when you can. Stopping is the last thing you want to do, but as you saw in those sample video clips, it can happen. If you have trouble judging it, it comes down to practice. But remember what I said, if the vehicle is a long way away, if they're getting closer or getting bigger in the mirror, it's a simple way of looking at it. It sounds silly, but I say to people as I say, can I join, can I join? Is the, is the vehicle getting bigger? No, we can join. If it's getting bigger, it's getting closer. If it's getting smaller or we'll sound the same, that's fine. So let me know if you've got any questions on that and I shall answer them in the comments section. That's all for now. Check out these other videos on the screen for more help with your driving. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you again soon for more videos.